Hello and welcome. Today we've got this 4 ampere dwarf battery, but there's something interesting about this one. It's manufactured 2012. It is now 2025. There's no surprise that this is not working. But can I fix it? That's the question we need to ask. So here we are on at the bench and we'll just do the usual thing. We'll try it in the charger first here. And it's showing a fully charged light, even though it's no. And we'll try it on the tool as well, just to do the job right. It's going. It's going. But then it stops. No, nope, that's not good. That makes me think that there's some voltage in it that it's um, it's actually near near working voltage but it ain't right next thing is the voltage check to check what voltage is coming out the top of this thing that'll tell us more than the rest of the things I've done well up until now let's see 16 volts 16 volts is too low. Um, the working voltage of an 18 volt battery is between 17 and 21. 21 is fully charged. Just 17 and a half, 18 is when you need to charge it usually. So this is too low, but we've got to find out why. That just tells us some things, but not everything. To go further with this, we're going to have to open this battery. And you need a Torx T10. And screw these out. This is an old battery, so when I open this, I'll probably put on gloves. First of all, we see that doesn't look good, that rust there. Look at that. There's a lot of corrosion there. The battery's dirty, which you would expect. I don't know if that board's still working, it might be. That might be vanished, that might be bit. Anyway, might not be. Um, gotta look at this here, just to see if the connection's still attached here. Yes it is. Sometimes if there's an overload, it can blow out that. If we had five banks of cells, and that was blown out, we probably would be getting about 16 volts through that, so that was a suspicion, but the connection seemed to be all connected at the top. The next thing we've got to do is get it out of the pack. Judging by this, this could be stuck in there, you know, it's... We'll, we'll see. It's a lot of corrosion. It's been a bit of leakage out of these cells. These ones are making me too bad in the end. Just a bit of corrosion, you know. Yeah, let's check the voltage in these just to see these banks of cells. You see what we got. Um might be easier to check from the top. Easier to get a connection. Three and a half in that one. Um is 4.1 so there's, there's cell imbalance already cell imbalance already four point one about 4.14 four. I'm not expecting there to be anything in this you know very 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 low that cell that bank of cells. This one that I've been suspicious of is very, very low. It might be a good idea to remove that. I would need to replace that nickel anyway, it's all corroded. Um, what I need to do is bring these up. These are 3.5, the rest of these in the model are 4.1. I could try and bring this up as well. But I'm thinking, since there's leakage there, since there's something went on there, 
maybe it might be a good idea to replace those I'll replace these two in the end and I'll bring these up and hopefully I'll bring back this 2012 battery I've managed to salvage these cells from a flex volt battery they're um, 20S's which are similar to these they're a different brand but they're similar in capacity they're the same milliampere um, I have to bring them up to 4.1 volts to match these three banks in the middle um, I can do that with this XTAR charger lucky for me 4.1 is a bit fully charged in these cells so we can just leave this to charge them without having to look after it so put these two into that and leave them sitting and when they're fully charged they'll fit in in the bad bank which is this one so we'll leave them for a while if you want to buy one of these I'm going to put an Amazon link in the description and put it in the comments section and for this bank of cells here in the end it's 3.5 I have to bring that up to 4.1 which is fully charged we're going to use a different kind of charger Yes, we have this Amax B6 LiPo balance charger. Um, it has to be set to LiPo charge, and it's set to one S, which is one series. We'll just be um, charging this one bank of cells in the end, so we can connect to the positive, which is here. So we might as well check, just connect the positive to actually here, because that connects to here anyway and we can connect the negative to this part here let's see if you can see what i'm doing and i'm going to give it six amps because yeah i don't like waiting so you hit the start button and press enter and that'll start bringing that up and that'll fully charge that end bank of cells if I just leave it like that so what I'm gonna do if you want to buy this I'm gonna put the Amazon link for that in the description and put in the comment section as well so we just gotta wait for these to charge and then we're gonna fix this battery so it's been charging for nearly an hour and I think it's brought it up you see that um, 0.3 amps is going on to it, so virtually nothing's going on. So I'm going to switch it off to see what the voltage is like. And they, that beeping was just sensing the breaking connection because I just pulled it off where I really stopped it. Anyway, right, so we'll just go along the banks of cells to see how we're doing now. Right, that's 4.16. Light that up again. 4.13, which is near enough. 4, whatever, come on. 4.14, which is very good too. 4.131415 or something like that. And then there's this end bank that we have to remove and replace with the other ones. And hopefully be soon charged up. Right, this is uh, getting there see the milliamps dropping so that's coming very near where we want it to be the 4.1 4.2 this is taking quite a charge now so we're waiting for that to drop and the cells to fill up and then we can replace them on here so in the meantime I think we should probably try and pop out the cells that are bad first so here we are we'll just pop this off You get underneath these welds they're old so it's not it's not as if they're holding very well anyway so um yeah we'll get underneath those and uh, I'll remove this solder as well take this off and let's see can we get this ah, that's perfect get that melted off there doesn't take much
There we are. That's the bad ones out anyway, so we'll just wait for the other ones to charge up enough so we can set it, slide them in and complete this job. But these are fully charged up now, and um, they're both over a 4.1. I don't think I need to do a while lot to them. Probably clean up the edge in this one. side too. not bad. Clean up these edges as well. And there's a wee bit of damage in this one. That's an insulation. So I'm going to just put this green sticker on. Get the stick hopefully. And uh, that'll help prevent cross connection the positive and the negative so we'll do that that's a little bit better then we can start joining these cells together so I'm going to go and get the spot welder right here we go So just get this side connected now.
that's all the connecting done, all the soldering done. So we'll put it in the box and see if we can get it to do what we want it to do. Right, back together, showing three bars and we'll put it on the charger to see if we can get a, a recognition. Yeah, it's probably fully charged, that's why we're getting the full, full charge light. And we'll check the voltage and then we'll try it in the tow. So we'll check the voltage. And we've got 20.4 which is very very good. That's maximum voltage for a battery like this. It doesn't get any better than that. And we'll try it in the tool just for good measure. Just to make sure that it is going. That's it. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and check out my channel for all my other videos.